to introduce uh, Catherine Oselin. Uh, she is a French teacher in uh, Mount Vermont High School, Mount Vermont in Washington State. And she's uh, also the president for, for sorry, the Spanish, uh, Waffle Washington, the uh, Language Teacher Association in, in Washington State. And we are here uh, with an outstanding um, uh, webinar, uh, online, online tools for all three modes of communication. Uh, communication in remote learning. So Catherine, thank you very much. I, I would have to mention also that uh, this uh, series, um, the, we have the support from the Indiana Language uh, Roadmap and we are the Indiana Foreign Language uh, Teacher Association. We have John May Wan here joining uh, for this uh, webinar. She is our second vice president and she's going to be the conference chair for the 2020 EFOLTA uh, conference. So, uh, Chanme, do you have any any words before starting with Catherine? Uh, I'm working on admitting everyone here. We still have a lot of participants. Now we have 103. Okay, so welcome everyone. I know there are a lot of Chinese teachers here. Thank you for coming. So it's our honor to have um, Catherine, come here. It's okay. So now we can start. Well, thank you so much. And I, I wanted to thank again the Hamilton Lugar um, School of Global and International Studies, and especially uh, IFT LTA, Indiana Language Roadmap. Thank you so much for inviting me. And what I've done is this is my presentation. And if you've been in Zoom lately, <laughs> I'd love to say that, you know that you can get out of my window okay you can uh, minimize the large window and you will be able to go into your own screen and i put in the chat and i'll put again the presentation link so that you can interact with these and you can also use this for later and i know this will probably be up on the website we'll send it out on the on twitter with same hashtags but i want you to know that you'll be able to connect with me on this presentation and go through click on the links look at the videos all the, the student examples that i'm going to be sharing with you today um, we've gone through so many different things in the past eight weeks We've gone through the highs and the lows and the backwards and the forwards and the frustrations. So here we are today on May 11th. And I wanted to share with you some of my ideas. My name is, uh, most people say Catherine, but it's Catherine Ousselin. And you see a picture there of my portable. Um, it's never that clean. <laughs> and it's also, that's a wide shot. It's got everything that I need in there. Um, I don't use textbooks. I've been teaching French for, 19 some years, but I also do Spanish, Italian, German, and uh, you know, I'm learning some other languages just because I love learning languages. That's my thing. I'm also a, a curriculum design and technology integration coach. So I've been doing those things through ACTFL, through ATF. So if you're a French teacher, bienvenue. Um, you can always find me on my website. This is, um, I'll say it in English, uh, Catherine-Uslan.com, and there you'll find um, things that I share for uh, curriculum design and ideas and for technology integration, kind of like what we're here for today. I'm going to show you what that looks like. The website is sort of big. Okay, when you're here, these are the technology tools. I can't go through everything on my website today. That would be just so much. But if you're ever looking for a tool or if you're looking for an iOS app, I don't do Android stuff. Sorry, I've just got a little iPod and iPad. Um, there are many things and they're organized for you by what you would do with them. Okay, so it's just my website, catherine-uslan.com and, and you'll be able to see that. Okay, so let's go back into present and I might not do this back and forth so quickly because loading the images each time does take a few seconds, I apologize. And then we do wanna have the closed captioning on. Okay, so today we're gonna to be looking at identifying and integrating web-based tools and digital apps for dis uh, distance world language learning and teaching language production that aligns with our world readiness standards. So it's not gonna be just pop, 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 here's 50 tools in five minutes and go explore. It's what are we doing to make sure that the tools that we're choosing to use with our students align with our outcomes and with the world readiness standards. So we want to design activities, experiences, and assessments for all three modes of communication. So interpersonal, 
presentational and interpretive, right? We've got our, our three modes of communication in a distance learning environment. And that's been changed so much in the past, you know, two months what we've gone through is sometimes what we could do in our classroom, that perfect environment that we've created where our students are engaged, they're learning, they're having fun to the bedroom they're, you know, staying in or their living room or their, their, um, their family, uh, you know, like study where everybody's hanging out. Our environments are no longer our control. Where our students are is where they are. And we're going to talk a little bit about engagement. Um, you know, if you have 10% of your students checking in, great job. We can't go through everything today, but I just wanted to remind you of a few things. And this will be on the slide. I won't read through everything, but the big one is screen time versus human connections. What are we doing for our students? If it's just Google form after Google form assessment, um, that, that can be a, a, a question of how are we nurturing their souls first? And that balance, how many tools, how many websites can we expect them to use and to, for us to be able to use proficiently? I'm gonna show you many things today, but if you choose one or three, three being the maximum, okay, don't try and do this all. Um, I've been working with technology integration for so long, it's, it's like I dabble everywhere and I try and use things out, but I don't push too much on my students at once because they're overwhelmed. My students have eight teachers. And we're not doing synchronous teaching. We're doing asynchronous and we're allowed to give about 30 minutes per week, okay? So we're gonna focus on the feedback and the grades. So I would like you to just look that over. This so much that goes on right now. We cannot always control that. The first thing I'm gonna just jump right into is the question about interculturality and technology because I'm a curriculum design person first and a technology person second. And I wanted to um, share with you something that a lot of people are trying out right now to make sure that their students are still getting that interculturality from us. And I will probably jump out. There's a screenshot, but this screenshot, when you go on the presentation, will be a live link. So you'll be able to jump right into this activities as well. This is for my French two students, okay? And I've made this an interactive Google slide. And I have our, on the left is our one, one um, guiding question. What are my food preferences? And why do I like or dislike food? And I'm doing that because um, quarantine time is a lot of time for eating. And my students, strangely enough, will love to talk about food and their food preferences. We get into such hot debates in my classroom about whether it's Five Guys or um, the local cheeseburger producer, you know, who's got the better burger. So I've got a can-do statement right there on the left saying, I can describe texture and taste and, and the shape of food with some new vocabulary. I'm just doing a little new vocabulary. We had just started this unit when on March 13th, we were told we're not coming back. And then the other thing that I said was, I understand this idea that adjectives, okay, and I reminded them that those are descriptive words, in French and Spanish and Italian and, and um, um, let me think here, uh, Romanian, let's go with Romanian and Portuguese, they agree in gender and number. So those are our can-do statements on the left, okay? Then the students are gonna go on to the next activity. It says, how do we describe? And I've got a, um, I'll show you what that presentation looks like. The third one is just the quiz to review, what they just looked at. Number three is a Google form based on this video and this video. And I made a little video for them describing foods. I brought home my fruits and vegetables, plastic, and I made a little video for them. So the second one I wanna show you is level three and level four. And I decided to keep all the themes for all levels, so two, three, four, and AP about identities and culture and food and geography. And I'll show you this one. This is a higher level question. And the question says, how does, how does local food production influence the foods that our, our region is known for and our traditions. So whatever grows in your area is probably part of the food identity. And now I'll tell you that about um, 75 to 80% of my students in French, you know, from French one through AP are uh, heritage and native speakers of Spanish. So they're coming into the class and French is sometimes their third or their fourth language. And I said, well, let's talk about our identities because your family may have food traditions from a different country. And so we look at our local and then we look at our international and we put it all together and we talk about that. 
So what are some of the typical dishes from our region and from Francophone regions? And I'm going to be teaching in a little bit of geography in there. And then how do my favorite dishes influence my identity? So it's intercultural. We're taking the large, we're taking the small, and we're kind of meshing it together. So I'm going to show you what these look like. Um, the little bit emoji thing, a lot of people are getting into those right now. And I've got this set up for my students. So I've done it by week, by week, by week. So they never have to worry. This is week three. We just finished that. And we're just starting to talk about school lunch around the Francophone world. Every year, my students would be exploring a Google map, which I'll show you in a few minutes, that has um, pictures of schools from around the world, that are the French speaking world. And you can click on the link and it will take you to their school lunch menu. And then you can look at it and go, why aren't we eating like that? And I would like my students to understand that how we treat school lunch actually reflects our identity and our, our values as how we treat, you know, what is food to our children. So they have a video again to watch. They've got an activity that I'm going to give just a little sneak for you to look at. This is Seesaw, and we'll talk about that more. Seesaw is free, and it also has a paid version of it. And as a teacher, you can create activities. And these are all the unapproved posts. My students got their work done, most of them, okay? So I set this up for them where I gave them the directions. And then I've given them an interpretive task. I want them to look at the food groups because we're learning that vocabulary. I've got them in French and they have these pictures that you can get from Canada, from France, from all over the world. I put those pictures in. They don't really have to do anything yet. And then the next activity, I gave them a bunch of pictures, no words, just pictures of fruits and vegetables and meats. And I said, okay, you're gonna drag these into the correct categories. So they had looked at this, right? Then they said, okay, these are milk products, these are fat products, these are cereals, okay? And then on the next activity, they proved that they looked at that by dragging the pictures in the correct spots. Okay, that's a great way just to get some quick interpretive information. Can your students identify food groups? Okay, the next one was they had to speak, and this is where you can record on Seesaw. We'll get more into Seesaw in a minute, but it's just a great way for students to do a little bit of production. And on here, I had four statements I like to eat, I don't like. I've never tried, and I even glossed that there for them because that was new, and then I refused to eat. And then I had a bunch of food words, they were on the sides, and the students dragged those words over into the correct category, and then they chose, I believe, six statements, so they recorded themselves speaking, and then I can listen to my students. So there, they were just saying their basic, I like, I don't like. This isn't higher level thinking yet, but this is a great way for me to get that interculturality and saying, we always start with the student. I am the most important person, right? So this is where they were talking about this, um, their, their, their personality, their, pers their personal preferences. They had two videos then to watch, and one of them was in English, and it was the CBS um, France's Gourmet School Lunch. And one of them was um, a student who was being a, an exchange student. He just filmed what it looked like in a school cafeteria in France. And then I had the students fill out a reaction. Okay, so I asked them some real basic questions like, hey, what have you been doing to get yourself into French? And then I asked them questions about the videos that they watched. And I put those videos right back in the form in case they needed to see them again. There they are right there. And so I asked them questions in English because we're doing the interpretive mode. I didn't need them to, um, I didn't want them to try and fake French. I wanted them to show what they understood. So based on what you saw and you heard, what changes would you propose for our school lunch experience? So now I'm bringing it back. You saw what it was like out there. Bring it back home. What is the school lunch like in Mount Vernon? Okay. And then there's an Instagram that I sent to my students um, for this chef that I've been working with in, in France for the past couple of years. He posts the food that the schools eat at his um, middle school. Right now, they're just donating food, you know, but he always shows the local production. This is what we grow in our region, and that's why I'm making this for your school lunch. 
It's, it's the most perfect person I've ever seen. If you're a French teacher, go find him. Uh, Christophe, Christophe de Mangel, I think, okay? So this is how I get that idea of you know, interculturality. And each week, the students are doing something different, but within the same theme, okay? So that's how I build these. This is my, this is my uh, template, as I say, for teaching the students. And I'm gonna stop real quick right there and see if there's any questions. Because I saw a lot of chat things come um, up. Do you have questions? It says, um, yeah, so one Google slide is for one week because we can do about 30 minutes of activities. Each of these takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I have a question. So you can incorporate the seesaw in your Google slide? You can put a link to the activity so the students, when they click on it, they're going to be, um, they'll come into the classroom and they'll see the activity and it'll say start this activity. So I'm just linking it to them. When you make an activity, you have a, right here, it says get activity link. Oh, so you oh. create activity at the Seesaw, but yep. provide the link in your Google. Yeah. yeah, and that's where you put, you can mash all that stuff together. So think of it as an artist palette. You're just pushing things on there. Here's a video, here's a Seesaw activity, here's a Google form. You can put anything that has a link into your presentation. Okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, I wanted to see if there's anything else. Okay, looks good. Um, you have links to both my upper level and lower level um, experiences. The one that I did for the upper level kids, they're looking also at, um, they're looking at geography. So we looked at the United States first. We talked about regional things in the United States. And then I started showing them about friends. Okay, um, we'll, go to, we'll go to different parts and then I'm teaching them about uh, the different regions and I'm giving that, that input so that they're, they're still being able to see the context that we're looking at. The next week's work is that I'm going to start showing regional foods from each part of France and connecting that to this is what they produce, this is what the, the dish is. And if you've never used ThingLink before, I'm gonna pop that up real quick and show you what the students are. They don't, this is a surprise for them. They haven't seen it yet. Um, this is a paid site and I've gone back and forth on why I like it. You, I think you can make one or two free ones. Um, maybe if your school will pop in and pay for it. So here's an older um, map of France. And what I've done is add links to things. So in Normandy, okay, the north of France, there are cows. So one of the favorite dishes is the fresh cheese Normandie. Okay, they produce camembert. And then I've got a video for them to watch. They also produce apples. So they have apple cider, the alcoholic iron. So now the students are gonna look at this and see all the different um, regions, their specialties, their geographic um, produce, what they harvest, grow, or cultivate. And that's again, bringing back to our Here's France, and here's what we eat, and this is why we why, why we eat it. It was a big idea, trying to put that to the students so it's pretty like in chunks for them so that they can see the different aspects. And uh, just to take a second, are there any questions on that? Catherine, is CISO the only one for? We have a question on the chat for the three months of communication. No, I'm going to show quite a few more. I'm going to show quite a few more. I was just giving you like the, the, the rough um, like overview of one way that I'm presenting all three modes to the students on my Google Slides. Um, the, one of the, mm -hmm. the, the other question, it's uh, a thing link, do anything you can already do in Google Slides. Truthfully, um, uh, that's a good question. I think you can do so much in Google Slides now that you probably, um, you, if you're very good at learning how to put the, the, the links on pictures, it's a little bit easier in ThingLink, but if you can handle it, I would try. Because um, ThingLink, like I said, it's a great product, but it's just that it's so expensive for many people that we don't know how, um, yeah, I would just start tagging up pictures like I did on here. I had a background picture and then I put in my different videos and such. So 
yeah, learn how to hack anything. There's one more thing I was going to show you. This is the learningapps.org, and that's one of the links that you'll see on the presentation. Um, this is a great site to make games and interactive um, uh, activities for your students. They have matching pairs. This is all free. It's a little bit better than Quizlet, in my opinion. Strangely enough, people get all excited. I love Quizlet too, but when you want to go a little bit further, this is a good option. Again, it's called learningapps.org. And so my apps, the thing that I had the students do was I created a game for them because, again, my students haven't had a lot of experience um, in the Francophone uh, in, in the United States traveling and eating the foods from all around our, our country. So I'm trying to show them what people eat in the United States. So I got a picture of the United States and I put little markers on it. And when you click on a marker, it tells you, okay, you're in Minnesota. What food do you think is a specialty of Minnesota? So then they choose this and this is it. This is walleye sandwich that's very popular. And they're going to select that. And when they're done, they can check their answers and see if they're right or wrong. That's just one of the apps that you can do. There's so many, and there's so many already made for language teachers, even Russian, Spanish. I don't know about Chinese. I would look into that. But for French, you can just use someone else's stuff. And then I had my students take a picture of it and there it is. That was an activity for us. It was just a quick little one for it. It was right here, the learning apps. Okay. So now we're going to get into the meat and um, potatoes of this since we're talking about food. And we'll do more than food, of course. Okay. So those are just some screenshots of the things that I'm having my students do. The first we're going to look at is interpretive listening and reading. Okay. And to start with interpretive listening, most of you have heard of Edpuzzle. And you've seen what this can do, and it's a great option. Now, I have a link right up here in the presentation that'll take you to my web page that will give you even more. Because I, I know that you've probably seen Edpuzzle, but did you know that there were also these options? Okay, so a big one that is um, uh, impressive right now for listening is Charlala. Have you heard of that one, Charlala? No, not yet. Um, that one's in there. Also, Garbanzo. Um, that's Martina Becks. If you know Marti Martina Beck, she is amazing. She's doing this online interactive library. They're little stories that are created for Spanish um, learners. Okay, but you also have TeachVid and FluentKey and PlayPosit. There's all sorts of things that you can do. Okay, and it's basically you're adding an open-ended questions, multiple uh, multiple choice to to different types of um, videos. I'm going to show you one that I made for my students. I've made quite a few hundred of them, but if you've never used it, it is free. And then you can get more videos by recommending it to your friends. This is the one that I made for my students and I wanted to give them the idea of what are the symbols of France. And so on one of my slides, I had compared uh, Uncle Sam to Marianne and um, the, 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 the oh my gosh, flag in France, the tricolor for the stars and stripes. And so this is a video I found on YouTube. You can see it right down there. And then I added in the questions below, okay? And then my students went into the class and they've got it right here. I assigned it to, I accidentally assigned it twice, so I've got to go through both versions of it. But I can look at the students who have finished it and see how they did and I can assess their learning that way. Okay, so you're going to pull a video from either um, maybe Khan Academy, not really, but um, YouTube, Daily Motion, something that's a video site. And then you can put those questions in and see how the students, you can always change their, ans um, their scores if you think that they deserve instead of a zero and you want to give them a 70% and you can leave them a little comment on why. And if they really, if they really drop the bucket on that one, um, you can reset their score and they can try it again. So this is, tells me how long they spent on it, how, when they turned it in, at what time, all sorts of useful information. Okay, so TeachVid and PlayPosit are very similar. Any questions on those real quick? Okay, I'm gonna pop into the next one because if you didn't want to use a, a site like that, you could still use Google Forms. And this is a different way to use Google Forms. I put a picture up there. And I have a video that I found about visiting Paris. 
and then I have all sorts of different types of questions where this is more powerful than teach vid or fluent key is that I can change the types of questions and I can also put links so if I have something I say okay now go look at this and then come back and answer the questions from one Google form you can make a variety of questions and that way instead of doing an ed puzzle now you have Google Forms, which is a good way to, to match it up. Any questions on how you could use Google Forms to make um, interpretive listening activities? Sounds good? Okay. Just a second there. I've made some screenshots. There's some other ones that I've done, like when I was teaching food, um, I wanted to, when I'm teaching food, it always sounds like I'm teaching food, but I wanted to show the students ways, you know, like how do we use another way of interculturality is pulling in advertisements, otherwise known as ads. So instead of me pushing out a vocabulary, the students watch 30 second ads for food. And if they were smart, they looked up at the top because ah, the name's right there. But these are quick ads, sometimes a minute, sometimes 30 seconds. And the question is right below, what are we drinking here? And I use words that are close to English, like te is tea, jus is like juice, softs, it's like soft drinks, and um, du lait, which is like in Spanish for my students, leche, okay? And I have one for McDonald's, there's water. So all of these are just to have the students, what are you seeing? And then you know, hopefully the word is up there and they're learning it in a different way. If you've never seen the French chicken can can video, you must watch it. Even if you don't, you don't have to speak French, but it's hilarious. And all the students laughing so hard in class. We love that. Okay. So again, there's a way to, instead of using all of those um, paid for websites, you can make your own. Let's see. If you're a Spanish teacher and you don't know about Laura Sexton's Spanish novice listening library, I really strongly advise this for you. Um, Laura Sexton is just a leader in, I believe she's in South Carolina, who does so much with Flipgrid. And she has people from all over the, the Spanish speaking world make little videos so that our novice speakers can understand. Okay, so she also invites people to participate. So if you are a Spanish speaker, these are authentic speakers. She gives them a prompt and they they re reply to her, so now her, um, her novice students can go on there and listen to those, and then she asks a bunch of um, questions based on that. Okay, so here are her people from the Spanish-speaking world. Looks like there might be a question that popped up. Um, what tool, okay, for the YouTube video, if, um, if you're in Edpuzzle, you can trim when you bring the video in. So you can go from left to right, or but you can't do it in the middle. Um, you can also use, um, if you're in Google Slides, you can start the video when you import it into a Google slide, you can cut it as well. Okay, so there's different ways. Um, I use a, um, a, a website <coughs> that, I, that I purchased from, and it's called Movavi, and it's definitely a good um, educator price level video editor, and that helps me. So I download the video sometimes, and then I can upload it with the version that I want it to. Um, internet access, uh, we, I, we're on the uh, technology for the group that kids that are having it. Um, I hope that you have another person that's presenting on that. Okay. So we're gonna go back. If you've got some questions about Laura Sexton, I've put her contact information right here in her Twitter. So you can find her at Senora Spanglish. So, the next thing we're going to look at is interpretive reading. How many of you probably have played with these before? They're called Mad Libs in English and Historica, um, Historias Locas in Spanish and in French they're called Texto Dango. You may remember those. Um, you put in a word and it makes a little, there's a little uh, template of a story and you choose the words without telling your partner what the story is about. The words are anonymous, are, I should, are not planned, and so then the students have a fun story to do this. You can scan this when you are done. This will take you to one of our um, stories. And what I did was I wanted to make a, I wanted to make a Mad Lib with Google Forms so that the students would put the things in and then they click submit 
and then they would have a fun story. Now, I've made a tutorial for you on this. If you want to try this out, you would click on this link right here. There's a video that you can watch of me explaining step by step how you do this. Plus, I blogged about it. But I'm going to show you one example of a story that I like to show for my novice learners. And what I'm trying to get them to do is read. And here it is. It's called, Who Am I? What Am I Like? And it's about animals. And I'm going to make the screen all big, big, big so that you can see it pretty easily. They're going to put their name in and their email. I need their email because when they're done, they're, the story is going to be sent to them on a Google Doc in a complete story. So the questions are real basic, like my habitat, where do I live? And I chose words that they can understand, right? And then what is it, what's the weather like where I live? And they're just choosing. They have no idea what the story is going to be. And these questions are multiple choice. They just choose one. I did put some adjectives with that agreement in there. So if you know French, this is des griffes coupantes. So I've got sharp claws, long whiskers, white spots, green scales. And then for new vocabulary, I put some pictures in. You could love that. I love that pig snout. It's just a great way to show that. Um, une longue queue, so it's a long tail. In cookie rose. So now I'm putting in words with pictures so that I'm adding on to their vocabulary. So they go through and they just click, 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 click. Um, they've got some things like do you, uh, they, they swim, they, they jump with the different body parts. What else do they do with their body parts? What do they like to eat? Do they like to eat slimy um, slugs or ferocious uh, hippos? This is so much fun. The kids are going through this and it's, it's not, it's not overwhelming for them because the pictures are there to support them. Okay. So once they hit submit, they're going to have the story sent to them and I'm going to show you what it looks like when they're done real quick. And I just want to check if there were any questions on that while we're coming up to that. There is one question. Catherine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Alison is asking what level is this? And the, how are you pre-teaching vocab or making it comprehensible? It, well, the pictures are there to help it be comprehensible, right? And then I'm using words that are very, um, that, are, that are cognates. So shy, small, dangerous, aggressive, stupid. Those are real novice level words. This is the model that I created, the template. When the students answer the Google form, I have a little program and I can't get into the whole thing right now, but if you watch the video in my Google Slides, it'll tell you how to do this step by step. And so now here's the story. Hello, I'm a very interesting animal and I'm going to describe myself. After you've read my description, you're going to draw what I look like. So read really well these ideas. So I took all of those answers that were in here on the Google slide, excuse me, on the Google form. I made a form and every time a student answers one of those questions, wherever there's this, it's gonna go back to the form and say, okay, choose the word that they chose and put it in here. Okay, so now it's gonna merge those and the students will receive um, a copy in their email of the whole story. And I'll show you what that looks like. The merge documents, it's done with Autocraft. This one's kind of cute. It just comes to them as a, as a story. That's not the best one I wanted to show. Let me look at, that was someone that shared theirs. Here we go. This is a teacher that, sh that uh, filled this out a while ago. There's her name and here's her story. So wherever there were those little arrows, it took a word and it put it in there. So that's how you can make a reading comprehension. It's very novice at this one. If you look at these other stories, like Ma Vie Sen, My Healthy Life, that's an, that's an intermediate high story that I made. It's a five paragraph, it's amazing, experience for the students where they're learning how to talk about their, um, their evaluation of their health. And they've got, again, we've got pictures comprehensible language and I did a lot of the times add in some vocabulary just so that they can read. So they're reading this and then they're choosing that based on what they understood. Okay and so when they're done again the the story and their answers are going to be merged onto one document and it gets sent to you 
and to the student so that they can read it. And then you can have them draw a picture, you can have them um, use Screencastify, you can do a whole bunch of stuff for them to get, uh, to prove, to show, to demonstrate their comprehension of the story. So what other kind of questions would you have about this Mad Libs? Again, if you want to really get into this, you can always write me email, we can zoom together, but there is a, uh, a blog post and a step-by-step -step video that shows you how to make those. Okay. So, other uh, things that I do for interpretive reading, and you know, right now, interpretive is the area I'm focusing on most, the interpersonal and the presentational. Okay, presentational, students are normally gonna freak out and start Google, Google translating it. And I keep that kind of lower level, although you did see the um, seesaw activity that I did, that was a little bit presentational, although it was not, um, it, was, it was rehearsed and it wasn't spontaneous, but there's things you couldn't get around that. I'm concentrating on interpretive listening and interpretive reading right now. And the one thing I told you about was those school lunch menus that the students are interacting with. This is the um, map that they're gonna go visit with all the different school lunches around the world. And I've got a couple of activities for them to do. I also made one for school supply lists from around the world. There's some other ways that you can um, get your students to be reading is to go definitely um, onto a uh, Twitter list that you make. And you have certain Instagram accounts that you follow. You've, you can make a, a wakelet a wakelet is a great way to grab all of the social media posts that you want your students to see and put them together on one wakelet collection. And wakelet's kind of like Pinterest so that your students aren't out on Twitter by themselves. Okay, so these are the things you want them to see. And you can put them in the order. These are all links to tweets that were sent out and some videos as well. And in this way, I've created, I've recreated a Twitter experience for my students. I chose the video, I chose the tweet, I chose the Instagram post. You can always get those links off of a Twitter, uh, off of a tweet or an Instagram and just copy paste them into Wakelet. And that way, when you put those all together for your students, so here's a, here's a tweet, that way they're only looking at that one. And then I could have a question right below here asking the students, what did you understand? Or I could make a Google form for them to fill out based on that. So there's fewer chances of you know, students copying from each other. This is the good way to get the students to be reading, you know, and things that are authentic. There are also lots of interactive books. There's so much being given away for free right now. Um, I put all together always the in infographics and um, uh, art articles that I want my students to see and I put those on Wake the Collection. So it's like creating a workbook for them or um, a binder. Here's your binder of authentic resources. I want you to go read with them, interact, and then let's talk about it either. We can do a Zoom or a Flipgrid or a Google form. Um, questions about this? So far, so good. Okay, I'm gonna continue because I do wanna show you other things. I'm working on, um, hopefully, an actual presentation. I don't know if it's been accepted yet. It's called, I Can Integrate Social Media. And I, I feel like there's a great way for us to grab a lot of those. Although this is a novice reading assignment right here. Novice, novice. The pizza of your month, of your birth month. And so I put that up there and then I said to the, you know, French one students can read this. What month were you born in? And what pizza best suits your identity? And then they'd have to go and look up on the Pizza Hut website, what are the ingredients on this pizza? Is this a pizza I would eat? So I found this on a tweet. I actually have the link to the tweet right there, right? I copied the link from the tweet. I copied the picture and I put that in there. Right here is the tweet. And how did I get the link? Right here it says, copy link to tweet. And I put that in there and then I'm gonna ask some questions for my students, would you prefer this pizza or this pizza? And then you can ask your partner, which month were you born in? What would pizza would you prefer? Okay, so that's a novice interpretive reading, real basic, based on authentic, mm, uh, I know it's Pizza Hut, but there are Pizza Huts around the world. So the next one is um, two different um, pictures for you. 
One is from um, the, the International Day of, rights, of Women's Rights. So that is more of an intermediate interpretive reading. I'm just having the students pick out the words, what do you understand from here? Okay, they're not gonna understand everything, but at one point we do have a unit on um, women's rights and social justice. So I would show this and say, okay, what do we think this tweet's about? The next one over is from Koha. Koha is sort of like a home um, store where you can get um, uh, bathroom stuff and everything you need for your house. And this is a great, beautiful tweet because it's using the past tense. And it's saying, this is what we've done during um, uh, the quarantine time to help out our community. So it's all in the past tense. It's got pictures. It's very comprehensible. And I'm asking my students, what are the good deeds that people and companies do during this time of national and international crisis? So again, that's an inter intermediate, uh, you know, intermediate low, okay? The next one's more of an intermediate mid, and that's also when we're discussing international rights of women and children. This one is up again, higher. This is from the National Union of the United Nations. You can go to that link. And there it is right there. Okay, so then the students can read the comments, they can comment on it. You can discuss about, you know, the words that are, that are, that are more um, um, advanced for them. But, you know, you always start out, what do you understand first? What do you think the picture is talking about? Describe the person in the picture. What do you see? Okay, so this is about education. I put all these lists together for the ATF and for my students. You can see I have bookmarks. So if you like a tweet, you can add it to a bookmark and you can also create lists. And that would be of, of um, accounts that you want to uh, put into like a special group. And this one right here, the list is called fast food francophone. So anything that's fast food account, I put it into a list. And then I can go look at that list and I will only see those accounts and it'll be just about fast food. And I can get all of these wonderful resources. The same thing on um, Instagram. You can see so much there on Instagram and then create stuff for your students. So I'll take a second and see if there are any questions. Let's take a look at the chat. Uh, yes, I do have high school. So that the reason why I'm doing this on the so the social media is that I'm grabbing the tweets specifically and embedding them either in my Google form or in my Google Doc or in a Wakelet so we don't have to worry about going on social media accounts. They can you can take a screen capture just like I did, or you can make a copy to the link. Um, on Instagram, you can make it, I can't show you um, uh, on the computer because Instagram's kind of quirky that way. It's meant to be an iPhone or excuse me, it's meant to be an app. But when you save something, you can put it into a collection. Um, you can click the three dots and you will find that. And if you need some more help with that, just send me an email, okay? So yeah, these are really great for reading. They're authentic and they really engage the students, especially if you find fast food. Kids want to talk about what's fast food like in a different country, okay? I need to skip along here because we want to talk about presentational speaking and writing. Okay. Think this one. Oh, there, yep. Which one is that? That's, uh, so if we, uh, you use a web click to collect all the links you want to follow. Absolutely. Absolutely. I use Wakelet in this that I can put either YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or whatever I want. And this way, my students can see them and we're not on the actual Twitter site. So if your school does block those, you can slide them in to something else so that the students can see it in a different way. So you can screenshot it, you can put it in a wakelet, and you can put it in a Google slide. Is that good? All right. Well, if we look at the presentational speaking and writing, I always, and I, I say that this is meant for maybe when we're in school, but if your students have Chromebooks or they have computers, or um, this isn't necessarily for tablets, there is a wonderful add-on that's called Screencastify. And I've been using Screencastify in three different ways for several years. The first one is for um, students telling stories and 
using them as a way to dub um, videos that they see on, on uh, YouTube. So we, we take um, um, animated shorts and the students write um, their very basic scripts based on that. And there's a whole unit design and an activity here for you to do so that you can try this out. And do this also with Google Slides. And I'm gonna start with that one because it's possibly the easiest one for you right now. Okay, and my students, we also use Storyverb, but I'm gonna pull this one up. This is what I do in French too. So these are students are novice mid in September when they come to me and they've studied family, they've studied um, animals and a little bit of, of adjectives. And what I'm asking them to do here is to take your family members and your friends because we don't always want to use our family members. And we made up some Google Slides with pictures and the students used this Screencastify. And again, Screencastify or Loom, whatever, which one you're using or Screencast-O-Matic, they're ways to um, narrate over your screen. And so you can pull up a, a beautiful, um, let's just look at this one, okay? We've got our slides there. And I can go to Screencastify, which is a free add-on. I'll show you how to get in a second and hit record. It gives you a, t a, a, t a countdown, three, two, one. And then you can start recording in the present mode or not. And it'll make a little video for you of what you just recorded. So that's pretty amazing fun to get Screencastify onto Chrome. Just go to screencastify.com, okay? And then mine's already installed. It's a way to record over your screen. And I'm gonna try to show you what my students did. The, the prompt was, if my mother were an animal, she would be, okay, because they are. And so what the students were doing was setting up, did I change this? Okay, two seconds, sorry about that. Let's look it up this way on our, this is our, our um, class um, YouTube. And I've got a whole playlist for this. Okay, this one's older, but it's still, <laughs> yeah, let's do this one. So a lot of people said, well, the prompt is pretty high. And you're using the imperfect and the conditional. That's the second conditional phrase in most languages. And I said, well, if you give them the sentence frame, if my mother were, she would be, and then the students only have to pick the animal and the adjectives, you're gonna be okay. So the students went through this and they recorded, they chose the animals, they chose the family, and some of the kids wrote their sentences out and some of them didn't. If my mother were an animal, she would be mm -hmm, she would be this. This is a lot of fun to look at, and I've given you the, the entire unit. This is more of like a presentational speaking and writing experience for the kids. Um, it was so much fun. When it came around to conference time, the parents were so they were so proud of their students and they were laughing and they were a little mad too because a couple of the girls had chosen cows for their mothers. I said, don't choose a cow for your mother. That's, you know, um, it was good fun. The other one that we're doing is a movie talk and I've given you the entire unit design on how to do that. We chose a list of appropriate fun videos that are animated. And then there's a playlist for you to look at. And the students wrote 10 sentences to narrate what is going on. And they use Screencastify to speak over it. So it's great because you can hit mute on the on the YouTube web on, on the YouTube site and then the students talk over it or they can turn the volume way down so at least you get some of the music. This is a good way to use Screencastify. Yep, dubbing videos is so much fun. There's lots of ways you do this. Um, I gave my students, there's a question from Julia. It says, do you choose all the animated shorts? I gave them a list of 15. That was a pretty big list. Um, and then I said, if you can find another one, you can share it with me. And there's one right here that was by Danielle and Giselle. Um, it's about a little Kiwi that uh, doesn't continue his life. And I looked at it really carefully before I said it was okay for the kids to do that. But, but um, I do give them the list and I say, if you can find something else, let's try that out. So hopefully that answered your question. Are there any other on using movie talks? 
Um, the Google Slides, uh, can we put that in there? Let me do that real quick. I need to hop out of the presentation real quick and then put it in there for you. Oh my, there it is. We're gonna grab that share code, dot, copy the link and throw it in there. So now you can see those as well. You'll have all these links and slides. They'll be up for a while. I'm gonna put this also on my website. Um, the other one is my students using presentational with the, um, with the My School Avatar. And that's also a fun one to do for the students because uh, if they have the app, it's called My School Avatar. And you'll see a link for that down below. It's a way for them to have another person speaking for them. It's an avatar. They get to choose the clothes. Many of you have seen Telegami or you've seen, um, what's the other one? Oh, Voki. A lot of you remember Voki from the, from the early 2000s. So there's a lot of ways to have your students present over pictures. So I have them write first. We do the peer writing, a peer editing. We do the practice. We do all of this by hand and then they say, I'm done. And then I say, okay, you can go grab one of our class iPads. And we have a couple of apps that they can use. This one was about their group preferences. So you can click on there and watch those videos if you'd like, okay? When I use Screencastify, I use it mostly in class. Um, I could assign it as homework. I like to have the kids there because I can kind of control the atmosphere. So sometimes we go to the library and it's quiet there. And that way the kids um, don't feel so self-conscious being in the room. But now that they're at home, they're probably going to have some family influence and it might be a little noisy. So if you're going to assign something like this, <laughs> bless you. Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> So just have the person with the puppy, please just hit the mute on your, on your um, screen, please. Okay, so I'm not going to have time to go through all of the web-based tools for digital storytelling, but I just want to let you know that this is a good way right now to have your students with support if you're giving them sentence frames, if you're giving them examples, if you're saying it's going to be this theme and you don't let them go off onto the Google internets by themselves, you can use Screencastify or Adobe Spark Video. That's a fun one. That's a big favorite. That's both web and app based. So you can do a lot of picture, caption, video. It's a great way for your students to be talking. WeVideo does that. Animoto does that. Animoto, if you do the educator's account, it's free. Always look for the educator version. I showed you a little bit with Seesaw what you can do. I love using that for um, making a portfolio of my students um, learning. And I wanted to come back to that just to show you that you can do more than just those activities. I have so many different ways for the students to connect with us on that. Let's look at Annika here real quick. And Annika has, um, she took, we watched um, Belle et Sebastien. It's a very well-known French movie series. And I said, choose one of your favorite actors and we write about him because we we're learning about describing people and family. And then she found the picture and she recorded what she wrote. She's very quiet. She's always very shy. But since she's shy, she doesn't have to worry about standing up in front of the students. She took a picture and she added her voice based on her writing. Okay, so that is a way of presentational speaking and writing. One other thing that they did was they had to describe animals because we were learning about animals. So there's her recording right there. Um, she took a picture of what she wrote and that way I could see that she actually wrote it. That was a great way for me to do that. And then we were doing some reading, reading fluency. We were reading these, uh, this little book, Where's My Lion? So it's just a way for me to have an, a, like a snapshot of all year long. Here she was in September. Okay, and then October, November, December, January, February, oh, and here we are in March. It's a great way to journal, uh, put everything that your students doing on together, okay? Um, I have that link down there for Charlotte if you're a Spanish teacher, um, and I think they do have some French ones as well recently. Um, I showed you the Padlet, uh, excuse me, I showed you the thing link. There's all these links in here, and I, like I said, I can't show you everything, but there's also some ways to do some infographics. That's a great way to have your students being using icons and pictures and words. 
So if you had something that you wanted them to, um, especially in the intermediate or advanced levels that you want them to show, but you don't want a, a written paragraph, using icons, pictures, and text is a very good way to work around that. Okay. Um, let's see. As you see, I've got quite a few things here. Let's see if there's one more that I wanted to show you. And that was the interpersonal speaking and writing real quick. Um, there is a beautiful presentation from the Flinch, so that's New Jersey. They had six tech chats recently. And this is Caroline Schlegel. She gives some more ideas about um, speaking and writing, some different ideas. But my question for you on this is, does it need to be synchronous speaking? Because you can use Flipgrid, you can use Padlet, you can use Extemporary. You could try Voxer. That's a walkie-talkie group chat. It's sort of, it's not like WhatsApp, but it's an idea where I can listen to a question that someone says and then send them an answer. So it's not synchronous. It's not a telephone call, but it's like leaving a message. Um, a lot of teachers use that in the past. And then there's one more I was going to show you for uh, the last three minutes. It's called dot storming. And that's for writing. I found out that's a really good one. Um, it seems like all I do is talk about food these days. This is a dot okay. storming. Yep. Would it be possible to uh, put the closed caption? We have to only turn SLA. Oh, sorry. Let's see if it's up there. Let me put it back up. The problem is, is when I go out, there. When I go out of the, um, the presentation window, it won't be able to show it. But, okay. Um, so the dot storming example is where students can look at pictures, leave a comment, and then, then they can reply to someone else's comment. And I've given you an example you can go on and try if you'd like. It's all about foods from different Francophone countries. And then I gave a prompt right on the presentation, like, and I'm going to have to go out for a second to show you that. So the question says, choose a dish, explain two or three ingredients that you think are in there in French, choose another dish and say why you would like to try it or not. And then the third prompt is reply to someone else's comments, explaining whether you agree or disagree with them. So the students can do some writing on here and the chat will pop up. I can, I can um, close it off so I have to approve the comments first. This has been a really nice one. It's free right now because I'm sure everybody's giving out free options. But um, if you have any questions on dot storming, play around with it, write me an email. You'll have all my contact information. Um, there's also some ideas on how you could use Wakelet boards as a way to um, add comments and media and connect to social, certain social media. And if you're using Wakelet to create your own social media feed, then you don't have to worry about the students going into inappropriate parts of social media. Um, last one I thought about was using letters in a bottle from a quarantine teen. It's, it's fun in English, right? Um, I, I want my students to start sending virtual postcards, and I've got a Google template that I'm going to make up for them that's going to have a place where they can, you know, talk about their, their crazy adventures. I don't want the real stories. I want the weirdest adventures they can think of. So that's a great way just for fun writing. And if you put it on a Google slide where each student has a different slide, then the students have a chance to do some, some fun writing. Kind of journaling, but you know, we don't need the sad story because a lot of students are gonna say, I, I don't wanna talk about really what's going on in my life right now. But there's a lot of things I'd like you just to take a look at about the technology and language learning and core practices on how we choose our tools. So those are both links for you. And if you are an iOS user, if you do have iPads or your students have iPhones in the class, these are some of the best, um, uh, this is a symbol with some of the best apps for you to use that meet the world readiness standards and the common core standards if you're in the United States and you still know about the common core standards for writing and speaking and listening and presenting. So I put those there together for you. And you have a whole bunch on my, on my website as well. So I think I'm gonna stop there because I've got so many things I don't want to continue on with, with uh, too much. And just see if there are other last minute, um, last minute questions because I have time if you want to stay on. Question, so you can raise the, um, you can use your, your hand or you can use the icon for raise hands. And Chan May and myself, we look for questions or if you want to 
uh, uh, being muted. Just let us know through the chat. Questions for Catherine? Let me see. They asked about Catherine's email. Oh, my email is on the first um, slide on this. Okay, so I can, yeah, I can copy, paste, paste You want to put it in the chat, um, it's right I think there. I have to post twice. So, um, I, I'm always Catherine KU, so if you find me on Twitter or if you find me on email, it's KatherineKU72 at gmail.com. Well, someone asked about the dot storming, is it free? Which one? Oh, dot storming is free right now. So, oh, only right now. Yes, right? It's, mm -hmm. it offered me, I think, 30 or 60 days of it being free. And then I was going to look at the um, uh, regular price. But it, it's a good time to experiment on, on by yourself or with your friends, or if you want to try it out with your students. But again, you're going to try and stay down to one or two or possibly three things. We, I have a month left with my and I'm not going to overwhelm them with tools. I'm not going to guess what I found out on this webinar. I'm going to try it all at once. Don't do not do that, please. That'll Since that we have four questions on the chat. Okay. So, uh, wow, let me see because there are more questions. Let me see which one. It goes so fast. Yeah, there are. I know. Uh, uh, someone said, uh, just wondering, uh, okay. Stop please. Is there an, an, an app where you can pre-record a set of a set of questions? Extemporary is a very good app. It's a, there's a link oh. on there um, towards the bottom. It's E X T E M P O R E Extemporary. Okay, so that was my question. Um, uh, I, I wanted to know if you can pre-record a set of questions when students listen to it, mm -hmm. they can stop at the end of each question, yep. record their answer before they move on to yep. your next question. That's a really good app that's out there right now. Um, I'll pull it up. Can you spell it again, please? I'm gonna put it up here on the, on the can you see the screen? Oh, very good, thank you. Okay, this is good. There's also one called Linked L I N G T. Um, that's on my website. It's not free. Okay, so, but it's still a good one. I'll put it in here. L I N G T. Um, linked language app. It does the same thing and it's also very powerful. I'm a big friend of a big fan of theirs. Um, linked. Let's put the T on there. Sorry. Thank you. Yep, there it is right there. Create speaking assessments and assignments. Both of those are great. What else? Uh, someone just wondering, do you recommend finding authentic tests rather than using readers from Flango? Uh, is being advertised through teacher's discovery? I, I use a mixture of whatever I find is appropriate for my students, um, especially mm -hmm. It's important to look at those readers to make sure that they respect cultures uh -huh. and backgrounds and that they don't provide stereotypes. There are examples of some of those readers that are kind of like maracas and uh, and I can't, I can't agree with that at all. So use authentic texts. I sometimes change them so that they're leveled for my students. Uh, the readers that I use are usually from um, uh, I don't explain it for you, but it's like Fleur, it's uh, French, um, when you're learning French as a second language. And so they're readers designed by French companies, but meant for learners of French. So it's a little bit more authentic, but it's geared for learners. Absolutely check over very carefully what um, you can buy on teachers, pay teachers, or um, teachers discovery, because the, what we need to show our students are accurate and appropriate um, um, views of people from different parts of the world. There is one There's more question. Do you think uh, flip grid speaking can count as an interpersonal communication? Can you say that one more time, please? Do you think flip grid speaking can count as interpersonal communication? It's asynchronous. They're not speaking at the same time, but if they can negotiate meaning, 
So what I have my students do um, is, I'll show you this example right here. These are my beautiful students who are graduating this year. Um, when you set out the question, then someone has to answer your question and then you ask them a follow-up question and you have a conversation. They're still negotiating meeting. And I, it's, not very, um, it's not very engaging at times. Although I think it's engaging that the kids like to listen to each other, but they don't have to work together to get the meaning understood. So it's a little different experience. And for right now, interpersonal is going to be one of these things for us to assess. Um, that's why it's the lowest on my list. There is one more. What does Chalala do? Oh, yeah. Um, let me pull that up for you real quick. Okay. Let's hope we can pull it up fast. So this is a way to have your students talk and also draw. So the teacher can set something up, an activity for the students up, and they can have um, a picture up and then the students would reply to the picture prompt. They can also start their own story and the digital storytelling offers um, just great little ways for the kids to look at pictures and tell a story based on that. There are several stories that are already set up or you can create your own. And that's probably the one best thing about this is that the storyboards that are already set up and ready for you to go are um, created by a native speaker of Spanish who knows how to, um, who knows um, lang language learning pedagogy. So this is a lot of fun to look at. It's like I said, it's mostly geared towards Spanish teachers, but they are bringing in more French and, and German other teachers. So take a look at that. Um, I, I, I can log in, but I don't remember that I have an account right now. Are there three questions about Charlala? Is that a, a, if it's only for Spanish and um, you can use it for any language. I'll put it that way. It's just that it was started by, and I'm gonna use my school account here. It was started by a Spanish speaking person to do this. And when you, when you uh, go in and look at their options, it's gonna pop up here. Yeah, there we go. There's this library and you can create a library or you can go to all the different ones that have been recorded. So right now they have ASL, Arabic, French, German, Japanese, Italian, Latin, Mandarin, and Spanish. Well, wow, they've added so much. And then you can choose the level. Okay, so look at this because it is just a wealth of options. This is where the teacher is sending out a prompt. Okay, and there's ASL, which is amazing. They did not have this the last time I looked at this. Okay. So go on and look. If the teacher isn't your style, you can record your own. You can make your own, and that way you, you have your students listening to you. But uh, I have them, I really like the fact that, that they can have a variety of different um, accents and approaches to speaking. Catherine, I think we have the last question. What do you think about grad fee? Have I you don't tried know it? it. I don't know. Do you want to unmute and tell us about it? Who is this? This is uh, oh, Osama. Chandra, can you help me? It's uh, Osama. Osama. Yeah, hello there. Hi. Yeah, so uh, GradFeed is just like a virtual uh, you know, platform where, where, where students can correct each other's work. You know, it's like just to give feedback. I, I want to try it. I actually created a, you know, um, an account there. I think it's mm -hmm. free but I haven't uh, kind of tried it with my students yet. Well, I'm hoping that you can have a good experience with that. I've never heard of it or seen it. It looks like it's, it's a professional type of site. Yeah. Okay. Are you at the high school level or uh, university level? At the university level. Okay, okay. That might be a good level. Um, send us an email if you okay, have good success with it. That'd be really interesting to find out how you're taking more of a um, a, like a professional site and adapting it for world languages. Yeah, awesome. sure, I will. I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure. Oh, 
Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. So I think that uh, we are going to end this uh, webinar. Thank you to uh, Catherine for your uh, wonderful, outstanding uh, webinar presentation. A lot of ideas for everyone.